So Robin, thank you very much for talking to Proglock. Today. My pleasure. Um, as Mayor of Newham, one of the most deprived boroughs in the country, what's your vision for the area and what are the challenges that you see looking forward? Right, we have to do something about the deprivation that we've got. For years, we've actually contributed to it. We contributed to, to benefit dependency, we haven't challenged people, we haven't worked to make sure that people could improve their own, their, their own opportunities and actually improve their lives. So we think what we have to do is challenge people and then support those that want to change their lives. Those that want to get into work, we need to be supportive and we need to help them transform their lives. That, the only way to transform Newham and East End is to get people into work. Now we had convergence, the principle of convergence was agreed as part of an Olympic legacy with the last Labour government, with the Mayor and with the five boroughs which I chair. We came up with the idea that the East End should converge on the rest of London over the next 20 years. Now that's for child poverty, work, skills, health, all those sort of things, and we should aim to converge. Now, to do that, if we converge on employment terms, we need to put 20,000 extra people into work. So what we have to do then is work to do that. Now, we believe that the way we can transform things is by pushing something called resilience, and that's about people developing skills to enable them to deal with what life throws at them. It's about empowering them. <clears throat> you can use all sorts of different words like empowerment, but people capable of exercising control of their own environment is essentially where you go. So the idea of resilience and building skills is both personal resilience, community resilience, because you need links to other people. That's one of the things that many middle class people benefit from. So developing a community resilience and then a financial resilience that comes from work. So our view is we want to push the resilience, the idea of resilience, and they're based, that's based on our values. The values we, we, we argue for are reciprocity, you put something in, you get something back, fairness, which is linked to that, solidarity, because we're losing that sense of people working together as a community, which I think the trade unions used to give us in many ways. Uh, those are the sort of values that we think we should be pursuing, and those should underpin our policies. So in our vision for Neom, which is we want people to choose to live, work, and stay here, choose to exercise choice you need the, the economic capacity in your job and the personal capacity which needs you need to build your resilience so that you can have enough vision to say well, what do i want to do i'm not just stuck here i've got the education and the understanding to do something Th that's the things we think we should be doing as a borough mm -hmm. that's great and so um that's great in terms of the values and the vision mm -hmm. but what does this mean in terms of the practicalities that you as the local authority are doing to support people now our view is we build up a sense of what we want to do. We understand labour values, we understand the things that are important and from there you then say well what are you going to do about policy? What are you going to change to make a difference? So we know we have to get people into work so we set up something called workplace. Workplace is where what we do is, remember we're competing internationally, we've got people coming internationally to get jobs here. We talk about immigration and we say oh we should think about the impact locally. Well we're trying to. What we said is we've gone to employers and said Look at our, our people. Let us present our people to you in the right way, and we think you'll take them. Now, we're concentrated very heavily on people who have been not in work for more than a year, and we've just got some very interesting figures, which is if we send CVs into employers, we get 2% of our people taken up. If we present people to employers, 50% of the people we present are recruited by the employers. Now, that's a great hit rate for any employer. We're talking low skill jobs, right? Because when you get to graduate entry, employers have their own system. But this is getting our people started. Now, we will this year, in our workplace, which is entirely funded by us, £5 million, despite the vicious Tory cuts, they didn't come to us and say, oh, we're going to cut you. But you know the employment stuff you're doing to try an Olympic legacy? We'll support that. Nah, they weren't interested in that. They just want to criticise us. That's all this government does. Uh, we put £5 million of our own money. We were the first place in the country to say, if you're worse off working than you are on benefit, we'll make up the difference from our local council tax base, which isn't an easy thing to do. I have to, though nobody has actually been worse off working, we've found. The last Labour government's in-work tax credits and in-work have made a big difference. Too complicated, but big difference to, to what people have been able to do. So we will get 5,000 people into work this year, of whom half will have been resident in our borough for more than a year, because it's quite a churn we get here, and also... Will have, been, will have been not working for over a year. So we're hitting that difficult group, 2,500, 3,000 in this year, and we plan to go on each year doing that. Now, that's a direct policy that we're doing, we think, incredibly successfully. We don't know anybody that's got the sort of results we're getting. Which is about understanding employers, understanding what they want, and say, just look at our people. We're not asking them to change what they want. They know what they want. We present our people, and our people get the jobs because they're good. Now, where else do we go? We have to then invest in our young people. So we have said, look, uh, we think there should be a fairness. If you work, 
you should get something back. So we are giving free school meals to all our young people. That started with a pilot, of course, from the last Labour government. And of course, the Tories are going to finish their contribution. But we're going to keep doing it because what it means is that all young people in our borough have the chance of a decent meal each day, which helps them in all sorts of ways. But also, it's worth £500 before tax to people who work. People who work on low incomes, which is a lot of our people in the borough, we do that. Now, what else do we do? We've said we started something called ECAM, Every Child a Musician, where we take children in year five, we give them a free musical instrument, and we give them two years of free tuition. And if they're stuck with it for two years and still a resident in the borough, they keep the instrument at the end of that time. Now, why? That, they do that in the best schools. They do that all over the place. Why should our kids not do that? Why are we not doing this across the country and investing in young people so we can, we can make a difference? We do that. We're looking at devolving. We believe in localism. We think government can't run anything worth anything. The government are hopeless at running things. We can just see it. Um, so we think you should run at the, more, the local democratic structure. We think community leaders are elected, right? Everybody else says they're a community leader. Fine, go and get elected, and then I'll believe you're a community leader. Our community leaders, we've split into community forum areas and we're devolving powers there. We've done controlled parking zones and a lot of the traffic stuff. Active and connected, leisure, that's going down shortly. We're putting, we're giving, uh, we're putting a local service in, it's a library, they're all going down to local areas and being run with officers and local councillors running them. Now we think that will then help to get a greater degree of activity, a greater number of people to work. We've got the biggest number of, biggest volunteer scheme in the country. Of theft of three thousand in terms of active volunteers, three thousand volunteers. We were the first to do free swims in England. We believe being active is very important because people who work tend to be active. People who are active tend to work. We think there's a link there. Let's be smart and do it. See, this is all the stuff that's not statutory. This is all the stuff that the Tories want us to cut. Well, we won't do that. And we haven't cut libraries or activities or and we'll defend that because that's what makes a difference to our community. And Those are policies we think make a difference. And this is a key uh, point at the moment. We're seeing the most vicious cuts that the government has, has uh, given to... Hey, do you know what? Generation. Bring back Thatcher. <laughs> Isn't that an appalling thing to say that Thatcher was less savage than this mob? And, and so how are you then able to prioritise this in the, in the wake of, of such difficult cuts? How are you able to invest in this ambition? We've had a, a, a plan to reduce. We've been working very hard to reduce our costs. We think, I think government can change people's lives. We know it can. The 45 government did that. Now that means every penny you spend, though, has to be spent wisely. Every penny that you raise from people, we have to prove that big government can work. We have to prove it by using that money really sensibly. So we had a very, very big programme of trying to reduce our expenditure. Now, the savage speed with which the Tories have gone has meant we've had to take an awful lot more risks than we'd want to. But for example, we've come into this building here, big back office building, this will save, have saved us £50 million pounds, I think by the end of next year with all the things, because you can do things more efficiently. You do it more effectively. We've said on libraries, for example, we're not closing libraries, we'll move them to community hubs, all local, so there's all in the local community forum area, each you'll, you'll have the library, and then move them together and try and get some sort of synergy working there. And that's part of our thinking about devolving power and devolving, devolving things down to local members who then work with the community. So we're challenging on everything. We're trying to find ways of, of making more reductions. We've got plans, I have to say, to look at the way we deliver services and think about smaller units delivering that might be small businesses, it might be mutuals, it might be co-ops. We don't mind the mechanism by which it's delivered, but we think we can deliver even more efficiently better services. Because when we've got the money, we can use it for other things. The worst thing that's happened to us is with the £65 million pounds have taken off us, we can't do the things that we wanted to do. Free school meals for primary kids? I wanted free school meals for secondary kids. Because why not? I want to replace the EMA with something that will actually work for kids. We can't do that obviously this year but we're going to keep looking at how we spend it means being tough about things it means cutting things in the statutory side that are uncomfortable but the other side the non-statutory side is what changes people's lives that's what we've got to, and, and actually it's very simple and i've got a fantastic group who understand that the important thing is delivered to local people and when we started as we said the only thing we're going to be worried about is improving opportunities for local people that's what we're about and obviously nationally, the Labour Party is going through a process of renewal yeah, at the moment. Yeah. And here you are um, running a, a Labour authority. What is it that uh, you do that demonstrates what the Labour Party looks like? How are you living our values in action? We think the policies we pursued every child organisation, free school meals, uh, we're, we're going to be launching, we hope soon, uh, something on literacy as well. We think investing in people so they can change their lives is quite a tough... Now, this is actually a tough message because you have to cut stuff, right? If you're going to do things for people, it means that... 
we're going to, for example, when it comes to advice and guidance, we're going to be saying to people who want benefits advice to improve the bit, we're going to say, well, there's a computer program, help yourself, and we'll help you do it. But for people who want to transform their lives, we should be their best buddy. We, as elected representatives, should represent our community. We are the voice of the community. We should be the best buddies of people who are trying to do things. And we had a great example of this where I had a, a man come to me, he'd fought to get his kids, we're going through the courts and, and, and won. Well, we want fathers to be there for families, of course we do. He, he said to me, I need, and I thought he was going to say a council house, he said, I need a deposit for a two bedroom place so my kids can stay with me. Now, I want to give him that deposit because everybody in the community would say he's doing the right thing by his family. We should support people like that. Once, not every week, <laughs> once. That's the sort of personalisation that I think we need to get to, which, by the way, I don't think big departments can deliver. So I think we have to think about the way we do Now, what the National Labour Party should be doing, I think, if we're talking of resilience and investing in people, if we're talking about fairness and we're talking about people who weren't getting something back, then I think that drives you to a position that says no more means testing, let's have fewer but universal benefits, let's not be afraid of the issue about taxing in order to give to people. I think there's a safety net. I think it's a civilised society that has a safety net that says it's not, a very, it's not very nice but you're not going to starve. That was, government did that, our government did that. There's your safety net. But if you go out and work, you've got to get something back for that. And if means testing is going to take more and more off you, we've got to say, no, that's not how it should work. People in low incomes should benefit. And I think a, a, a deal, a new contract, people says, yes, we'll tax you if, you, you know, if you're earning more, but that's going to go to people who are working and trying. And so if, if the money is going to people who are trying, I think that's a sell the Labour Party can sell. That's what the, the, the welfare state was originally conceived as. And actually what I'm saying is, let's remind ourselves so that the people in 45 understood a lot better the people they were representing than we do today, and let's go back to the values and the ideas they had. The welfare state's been a fantastic success, but it's created its own problems. It's time for our generation to say, let's do something about it. It's time to have courage. Our leader, Ed Miliband, showed great courage uh, with Murdoch and the rest, we need to keep showing that courage. There's no reason why we shouldn't be doing something just as big as the 45 generation did. That's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Sir Okay. Thank you.